Welcome, curious minds, to Paranormal M, your haven for all things eerie and extraordinary. Subscribe now and enable notifications. Maybe drop a comment. And be part of our community of paranormal enthusiasts. Brace yourself for a mind-bending experience. Paranormal experiences in my family home. I grew up in an old house in the UK. My family home is a four-story terrace, just over 250 years old. It's situated on a busy street. It was originally a manor house with lots of land, but it was later split into three terraced homes, with more built alongside it in the late 1890s slash early 1900s. There were two cellars, otherwise known as basement rooms, two living rooms on the ground floor and the kitchen, the first floor had the bathroom, my parents' bedroom, and my brother's bedroom. And the second floor was my bedroom slash living space. I have experiences from being very young that I may share in the future, but for now I'll focus on some experiences that happened in my family home from me being around 15 or 16 to my early 20s. I'm not afraid of anything paranormal or unexplained. When I was around 15 or 16, I was up in my bedroom reading. It was a Saturday afternoon. I lived with my parents, my younger brother, two years younger, and her dog. I had no music on or the TV this day, but I could hear general muted traffic noise outside. I heard someone come downstairs, the door opening and closing and keys rattling. My mom shouted, Hello, up to me told me to come downstairs because they, being my mom and dad, needed to talk to me. This is weird, as usually she just tell me whatever it was that I needed to know as she was shouting up to me. I asked why, and she shouted, Just come downstairs. Sort of in a frustrated tone, so I did, thinking it must have been important. I got downstairs and quickly became confused. Couldn't find them. I shouted hello, in case they'd gone into the cellar. And this wouldn't be normal either, but nobody responded, and I was confused trying to work out where they might have gone. I thought I must have been imagining it, started to walk back upstairs, and my brother shouted down from his room, asking me what Mom wanted. I guess it was weird. She called me down, really. I replied to him, saying, Did you hear her? Obviously, I assumed he must have. I was just a bit weirded out because, well, this meant that he'd hurt her too. But nobody was there, and I was second-guessing myself. He didn't respond, so I walked up to his room to talk to him about it. I opened his door, and he wasn't there either. I got this weird chill sensation and goosebumps. I started to feel spooked. So I left his room and went back downstairs, trying to make sense of what just happened. But as I got back downstairs, my mom walked in with the dog. She'd taken him on a walk. I asked her what happened and where she'd gone. She was confused and assured me that she'd been out for around an hour. Hadn't been back at any point. She said that my dad was at work. He'd been out since 8 a.m. and was due back in a few hours' time. My brother was at his friend's house. When I was 20, I was working in, like, an off-licensed convenience store. The store closed at 10 p.m. Once we closed and cashed up and cleaned, I'd get out about 10.30 p.m., home around 11, still living at home. My mom called me at 10.10 10 p.m., asking me where I'd gone. I was confused and told her I was at work locking up. She said that I came home 15 minutes ago. Her and my dad were in the front living room and heard me come in. Here's some context. We used the back door to come in and out. Had two living rooms. One at the back, one at the front. My mom and dad would be in the front room, which was closed off from the other in the stairs room between. Mom said that they heard me come in and shout hello, which we normally did when any of us came home. Mom and Dad both said hello back and asked me why I was home early. They said I shouted, 
So you're ignoring me then? In sort of a joking way, they heard me walk upstairs chatting on the phone with someone. My dad then came upstairs on the first floor and shouted up to me to see why I was home early. Make sure and check if everything is okay. That's when he noticed my light wasn't on and it was silent. He came back down and they called me, found out I hadn't been there at all. Oops. When I was around 20, that's when this next story takes place. My mom and dad were sitting in the living room quite late, 2 a.m. ish. Heard my brother practicing his guitar in his room. This wasn't unusual as he would often practice for hours. They were enjoying listening to him play faintly when they both remembered at the same time that he was in university, living in student accommodation 200 miles away, and he had taken his guitars with him. This next one is when I was around 22. My best friend was visiting. It was a Friday night. I had been quite unwell, so she was coming around to chill, listen to music and chat. My parents were out at a function. It was mid-January-ish. My friend went upstairs to use the bathroom next to my brother's bedroom, and when she came downstairs, she said, Oh, he's just shouted you for something. He must have thought that I was you when I went upstairs. My brother was back at uni, and we were alone in the house. I asked her if she was certain that she heard him. She was adamant that she had, to the point that she really thought I was trying to spook her for a laugh. She knew of the above occurrences, and they freaked her out. Told her he wasn't here and that he was at uni. She didn't even believe me and demanded we go upstairs to see what he wanted. She was 100% convinced that she had just heard him, so I shouted. Obviously got no response. She said that he must have heard you, so I invited her up with me to prove he wasn't home. She confidently came with me, still certain I was joking around. We got to his room, I opened the door, and the light was off. His things weren't there, and neither was he. She turned a funny gray color, but wasn't okay. My unusual experiences as a vintage slash antique store employee. For context, I work at a vintage store that specializes in old antique Western American artifacts. The store is located in a wealthy part of the state, where a lot of wealthy people buy in bulk to decorate their second and third homes. This means we have a lot of sourced items being moved in and out of the store at all times. I'm not part of the sourcing, I simply sell items and help manage the store. Most, if not all, of the items obviously have energy attached to them. Not always good energy, either. Within three months of working there, I knew it was haunted, and that the resident spirits had taken a liking to me. With the coming and going of items, certain energies and events occur and stop, too. Experience 1. My moment of realization. Things were sort of weird from the beginning, but I always chalked it up to being a somewhat old building. One morning I was opening the store on my own. It was the dead of winter. Everything was very dark and snowed in. The moment I walk in, it's freezing. I think the heater conked out in the night, and I go to turn it on, and I see it's working perfectly fine. The warmth it's emitting seems to be dissipating after a couple of feet. I ignore it and turn on the main floor lights. I walk downstairs where it's pitch black. This is where we keep the majority of our vintage items. Before I can turn on the lights, our music turns on at full blast. Problem is, music isn't an automatic system. I control it myself from my phone, and I had yet to turn the system on. I was the only one in the building and around the general vicinity, so no one else could have turned it on from their phone. After calming down from that scare, I turn on the lights to discover that all of the pillows have been thrown off of their massive vintage leather couch. I still think it's weird, but try to rationalize it by saying maintenance must have come in the night to fix something, and they did that. 
I clean them up and walk upstairs again to find all the lights I've turned on. They've gone out. The light switches are switched off again. Not just the power. Again, I ignore it. I turn them on again and walk outside to open the front door and turn on the open side. This is the moment where I realized everything. Our locally made chapstick display, a heavy thing, gets completely swept off the shelf. It's like somebody aggressively pushed it off in the front of me. It did not fall. The shelf didn't budge. It was pushed off. Fifty to hundred chapsticks go flying everywhere and the acrylic case shatters into pieces. The music system suddenly starts playing the music very loudly again and I'm just frozen in shock. Things suddenly get very quiet. It was as if it or they just wanted me to finally acknowledge it. The computer screen turned on seconds later, as if telling me to get to work now. I think I stood there for a solid ten minutes, just frozen. Experience 2. The Wall of Mirrors This took place around four months ago. Our main vintage collector had brought an old vintage mirror that he'd found in different places, constructed a wall of them on the side of the stairs going down. I came back from vacation slightly horrified. I feel like mirrors just hold really bad energy, especially ones owned by other people before. It was a normal day at work helping customers, logging inventory, etc. One of the employees was working with me, and we were just casually chatting about life. Anyway, she went downstairs to help a customer with finding the price on a vintage fur coat and smart work. It's when the customer's daughter is walking upstairs, otherwise known as passing the mirror wall, and that's when she screams. I, being the person in charge, run toward the screen to just, just check on everything, and this girl is inconsolable, claiming that she saw a shadowy figure in the mirror. The mom is calming her daughter, saying it's just a shadow. I investigate. I don't see anything, just the normal bad feeling I experience passing these mirrors. We help this lady and she eventually leaves with her items. A couple hours later, a different woman wants to buy a wall coat rack. It's right by the mirrors. As I'm using the drill to remove the coat rack and my co-worker's holding the other end of the coat rack, her face pales. She's staring at the mirrors and can't look away. I can see her do a double take and continue to stare at them. I'm concerned and finish helping this lady out and immediately after she leaves, I return back to my co-worker who's still just staring at these mirrors. It's as if she was in a trance. I try to shake her out of it and she can't speak. It's only when she said my name and I look back at the mirrors do I see that same figure. A morphing figure. It's subtly taking on different appearances. Some feminine, others masculine, no face, just features. Used, well, I'm used to these things around there by now. Drag her upstairs and sort of ignore it. The rest of the day I heard from multiple customers about how they thought they were seeing things in that same mirror. One girl even threw up in the bathroom because she said she suddenly felt so sick walking downstairs. When I came back from my shift the next week, it was gone. My other co-worker had informed me that it didn't sell, but one of the other employees walked down one day to find it cracked. I don't know what happened to it or where it went, but the rest of the mirrors are still there. Occasionally they like to make messes and to play tricks, throwing pillows off couches, jelly cat stuffed animals being rearranged in the night, making sounds to scare people, switch the music playing and play with the volume. Generally they're harmless, not to mention they'd love to play with their security camera system. We've had the cameras and electrical looked at a million times and they all work fine, but things will stop recording and cut out all the time. Here are some of the more prominent stories that have happened in the last year. Experience 1. Vintage train toy moving throughout the store. I was approaching the end of my shift, which means cleaning up and organizing the store for the next day employees. I clean up our vintage toy area and walk behind shelves to organize our vintage Levi jeans rack. I hear it clatter and go to investigate. 
thinking something had just fallen over. Kids place things back on shelves in precarious situations and things fall all the time. Not always because of activity. I walk over to the toy corner and see a knocked over toy train. It's standing up though. And this thing doesn't run on batteries or anything. It's super old. But I watch as it starts moving at a moderate pace out of the corner and into the next little aisle section. Once again, it's just a mottled train. No strings, no batteries, no track. It stops after about six-ish feet of movement. After my initial internal screaming, I decide to leave it there for whatever's moving it. I hesitant just kind of try to ignore it and go back to cleaning. No more sound and movement right before I close up and put the train back in its shelf. Experience 2. The Silver Ring Basically, I sold a customer an old turquoise Native American ring. It was on sale, so no returns. A week later, she calls and begs for a return. She drives literally an hour back to the store and says that she doesn't want the ring anymore. I think someone regrets spending the money they did, I get it, but then she goes on to say things have been so weird in her house since she bought it. She said her cats were acting up, the house was making weird noises. The doors were closing on their own. I wasn't supposed to take it back due to policy, but we worked something out. She seemed so frantic. Sometimes you'd think somebody's making something up to get their money back, as it happens in retail. But she seemed so scared. And based on my experiences working at my job, I didn't doubt her. Nothing happened in the... well, after we got the ring back anyway, luckily. It was sold a little bit later to a collector. I didn't hear anything after. Experience 3. The Shadowy Figure This is not my story. It's a friend's who was visiting. She came in to visit me at work. She wanted to try on some vintage clothing. So she goes into the dressing room to try it on. And while she's doing that, I go into the next room over to show a customer the bathroom. When I come back, my friend is sort of shocked to see me walk back into the main shop area. She looks back behind the counter and then back at me, confused. I can tell she's processing things. She asks, Were you not in the back room just now? And I'm confused, seeing I wasn't, and my coworker left early. And now my friend is very practical as a human being. She has to see it to believe it. That's her philosophy. She then goes in to explain that the back room door, which is slightly visible to customers, was halfway closed. She said that there was a shadow matching my height and size making noise back there and moving around. She said that she thought I was back there grabbing items. She thought she heard me respond and say, mm-hmm, two at one point. And mind you, no one else back there or no other customers have come in at that point. When I went to look, the figure was just gone. Nothing seemed out of place, but she seemed to be convinced that I was back there. Me and my sister saw a potential demon, like a man with its face melting off. So... When I was 16 and my sister was 14, we used to go to our grandma's house every day after school to take care of her barn cats. Before we went, we always stopped at this one tiny little grocery store in our town that we would get soda and little Debbie cakes and dispose of the evidence in the barn. This way our parents would get mad at us. So one day we were in the store and my sister and I were at the opposite end of the aisle and I went to walk around the next and I was looking at the floor like I always do. I have social anxiety. I avoid eye contact at all costs. So I saw a pair of worn brown boots first. Work boots like all the men in town wore. Nothing crazy. Then I saw jeans worn too. Felt like slow motion. Then I saw the hands. Swollen, bulbous, and wet. Pale white, like a dead body. I immediately felt chills run down my spine. I continued looking up and it felt like slow motion. I saw his button-down red flannel shirt. And then I saw his face. 
was like it was melting. His mouth was just a black hole, and I believe his eyes were too. I didn't look for more than half of a second before my flight instinct forced me to turn around and walk back down the aisle. I wanted to run, but I was so scared that he would chase me if I ran, so I very purposely kept my regular pace and walked to my sister. That was before I turned around to make sure he wasn't following me. He was not. I told my sister you need to go down the aisle and look to your left, right now. She's laughing, thinking it's a cute boy or something, and I'm like, dude, no, I'm being serious. You need to look. So she walked down, stayed a few paces behind. When she reached the end of the aisle, she froze, staring in front of her like she was seeing a ghost. And I believe that she was. Her fear response was to freeze. I said her name. She didn't react. She was completely frozen in fear. I tried again. She didn't answer. So I grabbed her arm and yanked her. We both ran as fast as we could back down the aisle and to the other side of the store. We were both shaking. I asked her what she saw. She described exactly what I had seen. It was not human. There's no way that anybody could ever convince me that it was. And the energy around it was so foul and rotten. We had both had experiences with the paranormal before, but nothing like this. We looked around to see if anybody else was scared, but everybody was just being normal like they hadn't seen it. I told her we should ask them to check the cameras, but she said no way they'd let us. They'd probably just call us crazy. I knew she was right, so we left. Then that night she woke up and saw it standing in her doorway, so she squeezed her eyes shut and didn't open them until morning. I never saw it again. I'm honestly convinced that the second time she saw it, it was sleep paralysis or a nightmare or hallucination from the fear that she felt earlier. We went to a Catholic school, and so my sister was so affected by this that she went to speak to the parish priest. He was no help at all. He said people in our state, and we went to school in the next state over. People in our state are crazy. It was probably just a guy in a mask. If I've ever been sure about something in my life, I know that it was not a mask. I know. I don't know what it was, but it was not human. To this day, my sister can't speak of it. It affected her a lot. She's scared to talk about it because she's worried that she might draw it back toward her. I don't really know why I'm writing this. I guess because I need to talk to somebody about it, and the only person who believed me because, well, she saw it too, she won't talk about it. Please let me know your thoughts on this. For context, that was about six years ago now. An Army Experience 15 Years Ago I have to preface this by saying I have had prior incidents before the one I had my Army days and I attributed those to my imagination or my lack of sleep, simply because I was the only person experiencing them. After the incidents I had in my army bunk, everything seems more real. The army haunting happened more than 15 years ago, but I remembered it vividly like it was yesterday. I was a curious kid. I always had been fascinated by horror movies and games alike. There was a period where I would speak to them in my inner voice, tell them to show themselves to prove to me that they were real. Fifteen years ago, I was posted to Sergeant Training Camp. That's where the camp was supposedly built on top of a cemetery amidst a hill. I had no prior knowledge of the camp being haunted at this point. I was scheduled to be out of course and put on the top level of the accommodation on the sixth floor. On the first day there I explored the sixth level of my accommodation, I noticed that there were a few bunks being sealed off with chains and locks and a big Chinese talisman placed in a cross placement. It was placed sort of like an X across the door. I didn't give it much thought, but immediately knew that there must be something going on here. And to note, army hauntings are not uncommon in my country. I've heard stories about them. A few days later, I was put back in the training program. I moved down to the fourth floor to join trainees. 
I shared a bunk with probably 12 to 14 army mates. Nothing really happened in the first few weeks. We all have a cupboard next to each one of our beds, and one night the cupboard of one of the guys started banging loudly. It was as though someone was punching it. It was like happening repeatedly for almost an hour. It always starts banging at around 22.30, and usually lasts until before midnight. When it first started banging, everyone in the bunk was afraid. We switched on the corridor lights, and our room would be lit up slightly by that, because of our bunks on the wall, they're sort of partitioned. The top is just windows for ventilation. We noticed that the banging stopped. However... The bunk opposite ours was complaining about the corridor lights that we switched on. They complained to the course commander, and we had to switch him off. We told him about the encounters that we had in our bunk, and he said that they would send a sergeant to check. The sergeant was a new guy posted to the camp. Came over to our bunk one night, and we gathered in front of the cupboard to show him what had been really going on. We waited for a few minutes, and nothing happened. Then we noticed the corridor lights were on. We proceed to switch it off. In less than ten seconds, the cupboard started banging right in front of our eyes. The young sergeant was pretty much in shock. Went to kick the cupboard and curse at it, thinking that that would help, and it didn't. And he left. The banging went on past midnight, and it was the loudest that we had heard so far. Through the training, we endured the banging sound. Switched on the lights on some nights if we decided that it was uh, not something we wanted to deal with. On the last week of training, I don't remember the specifics on the day, but that night I remembered we were settling down for the rest of the day. The mate who had the haunting cupboard shouted to switch on the light because he felt the cupboard was falling on him. I woke up and stared in the direction as my mates went to switch on the lights. I saw the cupboard moving and tilting by itself stopped a split second as the lights came on. We were past disbelief at this point. We moved the cupboard outside to the corridor locked. About 30 minutes later, we opened the door to go down for smoke. The cupboard was open wide, and the lock was on the floor. No one had been outside since we moved the cupboard outside, and only my mate has the combination to the cupboard lock. We were shocked. We were shocked about what it's able to do, and that's it's in parentheses. One week later, we all passed and graduated as sergeants. My biggest takeaway was this incident changed my beliefs. I do not actively seek out their presence, nor do I need affirmation at this point. My argument has always been that if the whole bunk was there to experience it, I cannot dismiss it as my imagination. The experiment conducted by my family in the 70s. I grew up in a Cardicist spiritist family in northeastern Brazil. They were always very connected to the spiritualist community in the state, conducting various experiments and research. Both of my grandparents even published books on the subject. My grandmother still publishes to this day. Among these experiments, one in the 1970s with a group of people, including my father, grandparents, and uncles. They ended up being documented and was even translated into other languages. It involved the materialization of a spirit through the ectoplasm of a medium named Jose Madredo. A Dutch journalist slash filmmaker documented this event at the time, showing how the preparation and materialization took place. However, the only video available it's an Italian, and I don't speak a word of Italian, so I have no idea what's being said in the video. The woman being interviewed in the beginning is my grandmother, but because of the Italian dub running over the Dutch dub, I can barely understand what she says there. Using a special light to avoid burning the ectoplasm, the spirit took form and even interacted with the people in the room. At some point, it showed it couldn't be the medium dressed as a spirit, as it pulled the curtain to show the medium was lying on the mattress while ectoplasm was coming out of his mouth. Of course, I understand that the internet is full of hoaxes when it comes to the subject. 
and I completely understand if people doubt or think that it was a hoax. But there wouldn't have been many reasons for them to stage this at the time, since they didn't gain anything financially from it. And I even asked my father once, don't you think it could be fake? He followed with, honestly, from what I've seen, there's kind of an impossibility for it to be fake. As I wrote this last sentence for my dad, I remembered that it just didn't materialize itself, but also materialized flowers. I'd like to hear more from you. My dog never met my mother. My mother died less than a year after her cancer diagnosis on Christmas. That's her favorite time. This was in 2001 and I was 34. Her only child and I was adopted at birth. She was the perfect example of what a mother's role would have been at the time, and also the one who prepared me for life as an adult. I'm the only living person carrying the last name of my father. No aunts or uncles or cousins or anybody directly related on either parent's side. My father passed away in 2022, and at the time I didn't realize that he was the last person on this earth that I'd even, well, I'd even thought that we never saw eye to eye to. Excuse me. My father passed away in 2022, and at the time I didn't realize that he was the last person on this earth that I had even, well, last person on this earth, even though I never saw him eye to eye with him. I think that's what they meant. I'm a wanderer, and I love hiking and anything outdoors. I never married or had children, so after everything was settled after his death, I was on the road to an unknown and unplanned adventure with my three-year-old shelter rescue Hank. He was a blue healer, and by far the smartest dog I've ever owned, and the most stubborn. He meandered everywhere. I found a dog-friendly park close to my lodging for the next few days, stopped as I did every day to get his exercise. The signs led me on a dirt road, seemingly to nowhere. We got there, a parking lot with a porta potty no cars. We had about an hour and a half before dark. As we were walking on the gravel path that was basically big one mile, like horse track, started getting very excited and whimpering and turned around and ran back to me and he was off the leash. He wanted to show me something ahead, and as we came around the bend, I saw a woman with not gray, but white hair walking towards us. Hank ran to her and threw his body up against her and then barked at me and began whimpering, like a long-lost friend he found. When I got probably 40 feet away, I stopped dead in my tracks. The height, weight, how she was dressed, and that white hair was a perfect match to my mom. I lost it. I was overwhelmed. All the funerals in the previous ten years, everything that I'd went through, and the uncertainty of my future without anybody I loved or could turn to for support just came out on that gravel road. Came out on that gravel road in the middle of nowhere. I'm retired military, and I'm always the person to lead and to handle family, family situations. But Mom was here now this moment to take over, as she did in her family. After a few exhausting minutes, I realized she was patting me on my shoulder and had her arm partially around me. She was a physician person. I think they meant physical. I tried to explain and I guess apologize for whatever had just happened and she just reassuringly repeatedly said, everything will be all right. You take care of yourself, Billy and she turned and headed back to where she came from. Hank was still over-amped up with excitement as we walked back to the van. Drove out of the parking lot down the half-mile-long dirt road paved and went to our R&B. I never got this woman's name. I can't think how she possibly knew mine. No one's called me Billy except my mother. My dog, my dog acted like he knew her his entire life. He's trained, and he doesn't run up to strangers or anyone else without my command. Where did she come from, and where'd she go? There was another vehicle in the parking lot, and there was only, well, one place to park. 
The entire oval path was surrounded by thick forest on one half and the Kentucky River on the other. But clothing was so homemade looking, like denim pants, a flannel shirt with rubber barn boots. These were the boots that Mom wore during the hundreds of hours she spent in the garden and preparing vegetables for canning. It's been a little over a year since this, and I never once thought about it again. That's because I was okay and everything will be alright because Mom said so. This morning out of nowhere it came back vividly and hit me square in the face. Mom's birthday was 52740, and Mother's Day recently passed. I can't explain it and I'm not going to try. I just hope something or someone triggers a memory of my mom every year. We get caught up with our lives and time relentlessly moves quickly and quiet. We forget what shape that we really are. My parents are buried a few miles from where she was born on the farm and where I was raised. If I was able and in the area, I always had a red geranium on the grave in more months thought about the fact that I would never visit her grave again and it bothered me because I don't intend to go back. Now I realized I don't have to, because she will visit me. Seeing an apparition firsthand. In approximately 2009, I was living with my boyfriend at the time. We'll call him Frank. The house wasn't particularly old. It was built in the 70s. We went to bed as usual, and in the middle of the night I woke, not for any particular reason. I happened to glance over at Frank's only to see a man standing beside his side of the bed. I was looking down at him and watching Frank sleep. He had his hands in his pockets and the look on his face almost half bored, half like, huh, that's what it's like to sleep. I miss that. At first, I thought we were being robbed, but the look in his face was so calm or something. When I looked at him, he turned his head and made eye contact with me. He sat up and started shaking Frank awake. The apparition was still there. I then turned away to my bedside table and turned on the light. The apparition was still there. He continued to shake Frank awake, and he was a heavy sleeper. When he woke, the apparition disappeared. What got me about this whole thing was that the apparition didn't disappear when I looked away, when I noticed it, or even when I turned the lights on. Furthermore, looking back, I realized that even though it was very dark out, the figure appeared in full color. It was semi-transparent, but in full color. Also, this wasn't an old-timey-looking ghost. He was starting to bald, and I think he was wearing a sports jersey of some kind. Fairly modern clothing jeans, that sort of thing. Also, I wasn't scared once I realized he wasn't a burglar. That's the part that surprised me the most. I'm a very anxious person in general. If you had asked me if I'd have been able to fall back asleep after seeing a ghost, I'd have normally said, hell no. But the ghost didn't feel threatening at all. I was able to get back to sleep peacefully. Of course, I told Frank about my experience. He said he didn't know anybody that passed that would fit that description never looked into the former owner of the home or anything, and I don't know who this person was or why, of all people, they'd be watching Frank. For reference, Frank was not a very good person. Abusive, manipulative, greedy, lying, etc. You heard him. Don't be a Frank. Unless your name's Frank and you're cool. Then keep on keeping on. Unbelievable Encounter with a Creature I told this story years ago on a subreddit, and if you heard it within the past five years, somebody copied me. Fuck you. Starting off strong. I have to tell the story again, and the memories are haunting me. I was a nine-and-a-half-year-old boy. This happened a decade and a half ago. Don't believe me? Well, I'm saying it's truthful. It was summer vacation. The time was noon. I just took a shower, towel wrapped around my waist and dripping wet. I was feeling happy like a good, naive boy. I went into my bedroom, which I shared with my parents. I was picking up clothes, and no one was in the room with me. 
Almost as soon as I walked in, I could feel the ground vibrating. Weird. As I picked clothes, I felt the vibration was coming from behind me around my parents' bed. It went on and off like a cycle, but each time the vibration came back stronger. I wanted to ignore it and go about my happy day. Eventually, I couldn't ignore it anymore. I put my shorts and my wet t-shirt in hand and I turned around to see what was going on. I was exactly as I imagined. My parents' bed was shaking for no discernible reason and it seems to be coming from underneath. The shaking got so bad other objects started to shake from the bed hitting the ground. Then it stopped again. But this time, right in front of me, I saw this weird creature crawling out from underneath the bed about two meters away. It was pure black. Blackest thing I ever saw in my life. It was hard to discern features on this thing. It looked like a goofy 2D object, but it had two legs, a torso, two arms, and a head. I didn't know that I was there in the room staring at it. It was about my size and looked around for a second. I interpreted that as it brushing its shoulders off after crawling. Then it suddenly stopped. Its eyes turned to me and I could see fear. It was scared of me more than I was scared of it. We stared at each other for what felt like an eternity, but was probably more like fractions of a second. Then, without moving one bit or making any noise, it disappeared from my existence. My theory is if it was real, it was an extra-dimensional creature I saw that day. Yes, my day was ruined. I bet. I believe I was a World War II U.S. Navy pilot in a past life. Ever since I was literally a baby, I've been drawn to airplanes. My mom says that I was less than a year old. I would reach for stuffed airplanes in the store, refuse to let go once she finally gave them to me. I also chose a baby swing shaped like an airplane, and it was in this that I said my second word. Airplane. This soon began to intersect with an inextricable extraction to World War II. At two or three years old, my mom says that, as she was flipping through channels to get to Bob the Builder, I'd scream when she passed the History Channel, demand to watch, and sit just enraptured in front of World War II documentaries. Keep in mind, this is when that channel covered actual history. Specifically, I was interested in World War II aviation, especially U.S. naval aviation. I had a huge coffee table book with a painting of the Battle of Midway. I'd apparently sit for hours and just stare at it. That interest continued all through my childhood. I refused to play with anything but toy models of World War II aircraft. Constantly scribbled aircraft carrier battle scenes in my notebooks. Flew in a World War II B-17 at seven. Read untold dozens of books on the subject. Went to air shows and at one point, met with World War II pilots at one of those events. My dad left me alone with them and came back sometime later to find me talking with them about things I could have barely known. For example, how the visibility out of the back of a certain plane's cockpit was hampered by the light conditions at certain altitudes and times of the day. I also distinctly remember begging my grandpa to just order me this large die-cast model of a USS Intrepid aircraft carrier. When it arrived, I tried to remove some of the small molded plastic aircraft from the flight deck, inexplicably drawn to the tiny version of one plane, the Grumman Avenger Torpedo Bomber. I went on to start flying real planes at 12, got my pilot's license at 17, joined the US Navy ROTC to become a naval aviator, Throughout my training, my instructors would comment that I seemed to know what I was doing, and the word natural was used frequently. I say this not to brag, but just to note that I was absolutely, well, no skill of my own. When I was about seven, and I know this because Drake and Josh had just come out and I remember watching after my flying sessions, I would play a flight simulator on my family's computer every night. Nothing crazy about that. However, without fail, before I started flying in the game, I would pretend to be asleep on the couch, 
in my bunk, quote-unquote, before yelling, Now hear this, now hear this. Pilots man your planes. Jolting awake, running upstairs, leaning over the arm of my computer chair and beginning to throw imaginary switches. For those of you who aren't World War II nerds, that phrase is exactly how World War II U.S. Navy aircraft carriers would call pilots over the loudspeakers to begin a mission. Something that was not simulated in any of my games. Okay, nothing super unusual about that, right? Lots of kids like airplanes, and many people are interested in the Second World War. But here's the part that nags me. For a long, long time, probably even before I had the interest in World War II, I've been having a reoccurring dream of what I now think may have been my past life. It's incredibly vivid, and completely unlike any scene I've come across in a World War II movie or documentary. I've been having it once or twice a quarter for years. It's exactly the same every time. In this dream, I'm flying a Grumman TBF Avenger over the ocean. It's dusk, clearly a Pacific sunset. The colors are rich reds and oranges. The sun is slanting through billowing clouds in a way that I'd never, ever seen in my real life. That was until I visited Hawaii at age 21. I clearly recognized the cockpit of the Avenger from its distinctive greenhouse window bracing and its unique trapezoidal instrument panel. I look out at the right wing. It's full of holes and streaming a white fuel leak. Meanwhile, I can clearly hear the radial engine running, though I was pretty much dying, backfiring, coughing, sputtering. I call to my crewman over the intercom. Avenger had three-man crew, but there's no response. Either the intercom is dead or they are. I know that I won't be in the air much longer, and I have to ditch. My hands fly over the cockpit in well-trained fashion. I can distinctly feel the grip as I reach above and unlatch the canopy in preparation for ditching. I'm scared, but confident. I guide my plane down toward the water, flare and stall into a light swell. The plane skips once back into the air and then makes a loud shh sound as it settles into the water. Although I know that adventures are known for floating well after ditching, thanks to their large wings and fuselage, mine are full of holes, and I know that I don't have much time. Even as I unstrap my safety harness, I feel the huge engine up front start to pull the plane forward. That's as the aircraft tilts up and begins to sink, nose first. I reach above me to pull back the canopy, which I had previously unlatched. However, the force of the impact must have jammed it shut. I reach up and try to wrench it back, but it doesn't budge. As the water begins to cover the cockpit windshield, I start to feel a raw animal panic. I scream and tear desperately at the canopy release, but with a sickening lurch I feel the praying yield to gravity. It began its final descent. At that moment I wake up, often bolt upright and covered in sweat. Now I know this sounds a lot like a case of James Leininger, but I had truly never heard of the story until I woke up soaked one night in 2020 and googled World War II pilot past life. The similarities are eerie. I'm a very skeptical person, but I'm beginning to think that a past version of me flew an Avenger and died in the Pacific, circa 1944. Curious to hear your thoughts. I'm also going to an air show next weekend, the first one I've been to since I was a child. It'll feature multiple restored adventures. I'm planning to do whatever it takes to get the owners to let me sit in the cockpit. I'll report back here. Update. Well, it happened, you guys. Can't even describe the feeling as I walked up to the aircraft. As if it was the first one I'd ever seen in person. It felt like an electric shock was running through my whole body and almost felt like I was floating as I walked toward it. And I'm not gonna lie, I teared up. I told my story and one of the adventure crews let me sit inside. I, I can't describe the feeling I had. It all felt familiar. The switches fell to hand. Hell, I knew how to start the damn thing. Reaching back toward the canopy, well, I think you can guess how that felt. Well, you asked for the opinion of others, and I have to say, if you can reach out to me, that would be really cool, because believe it or not, um, 
I'm a musician and I'm writing a song about almost blaringly the exact situation you're talking about. Not to sound weird, but I'd like to talk next. Most haunted place you've ever been. I assume it's one of the most commonly proposed questions to any paranormal investigator, professional or amateur. Everybody's curious about which location is most active or yielded the most results. Anybody with substantial experience in the field knows it's a bit of a loaded question. Sometimes supposedly stupidly haunted buildings are dead quiet, while unknown or otherwise small haunts are the ones that we never forget. Yet all who believe in the paranormal have to answer to this question. Whether you've never experienced anything but have visited some famous spots, or you're a seasoned ghost hunter with plenty to tell, what is your answer to this age-old question? To kick it off, my answer is the same every single time. Edinburgh Manor in the barren back roads of eastern Iowa. It's by far the most active place I've ever been in my almost ten years of experience. My first investigation there will probably be the most eventful of my life, no matter how long I do this. My team and I got whistled at, screamed at, stomped toward the unseen footsteps, taunted with full-sentence CVPs. We recorded thrown objects in empty rooms, even experienced a chair moving by itself. Two people I went with entered as hardcore skeptics and are now firm believers. The place is so haunted I drove cross-country to investigate again three years later, only to encounter this time a slam door. Whispers. An object thrown at me from an abandoned hallway, in the most unexplainable est session that has ever been had in my life. I'll happily share any evidence captured, if anybody's curious. So what location has been most haunted for you? Could be somewhere famous, or the unassuming house you grew up in. If you guys could. I too am curious. Drop your responses in the comments. If you would, please and thank you. Mimic. Advice needed. Listen, I've had encounters in my lifetime but I've always chalked them up to an overactive imagination and a propensity to avoid sleep. I don't put any thought into the paranormal on a day-to-day -day basis, but this all just clicked for me, and I'm kind of terrified. I recently moved into a home that's a hundred plus years old, and this thing's been going on. When we first moved in, it was just me, and I think I would hear a person whispering behind me. Or like if somebody had left a phone and you could hear someone talking full volume, but not loud enough that you could really make it out. Since I've been here with three other people, we've had instant after instant of increasing severity. Last month I was downstairs folding laundry outside another room. Her and I were talking for a minute. I came upstairs and found her sitting on the couch. That was concerning, but all the other incidents have been the same. We all hear each other talking, but it turns out they aren't around. One of us was home alone for four hours while the rest of us were out of the house. He was so upset when I got home because he said it wouldn't leave him be. He kept hearing me yell for him or at him. He kept hearing us crying. Now the thing that just clicked. Since moving in here, one of us has developed insomnia. He's seen a doctor for it and nothing so far has helped. Could this be related? He's not reported to hearing a voice at any point, but the rest of us now hear them two to three times per week. Apparition appeared in my grandmother's kitchen window. We both saw the same thing. Of all the unexplainable things that I've witnessed throughout my life, I'm a 30-year-old female, I also saw an apparition once. And I'm sure I saw what I think I saw. I was about 10 or 11 years old. My grandma was babysitting my younger sister and I. My sister was 5 or 6. She was watching TV in the living room. My grandma and I were at the kitchen table. 
Her kitchen window was located directly above her sink. From where we were sitting, we were facing the window. There's a sliding glass door to the right side of the window that exits out to a deck. It was surrounded by a fenced-in yard and a densely populated suburban neighborhood. It couldn't have been any later than two or three in the afternoon. It was a nice spring day with slight overcast. One of our favorite things to do was to have tea together. She made the best iced tea and always wanted it when I visited, but we were sitting at the table chatting, drinking the tea. Out of my peripheral vision, I noticed something appear in the window. I looked up in clear as day right in the window, looking directly at me, was a man. He was dressed in what looked to me as 1920s attire. He had a tall black top hat on, piercing blue eyes, no facial expression but gray bushy eyebrows. One of those creepy handlebar mustaches that appear to be curled with gel or something. I had an active imagination as a child, and I was in somewhat of a daze as I was looking at him through the window. I didn't feel scared for some reason. I must have had quite the expression on my face. My grandma gently tapped my arm and said, almost in a whisper not to scare my little sister, Do you see that too, sweetie? With that, I looked back to the window and he was gone. My grandma and I went outside and inspected the deck and yard and nothing. I asked my grandma what she saw in the window. She told me it looked like a middle-aged man from the past and she didn't recognize him. I asked if he had a mustache and she said yeah. I asked what kind of mustache that she saw. She said it was big and curled. Had my grandmother not have been there to validate what I saw, well, I wouldn't have gone the rest of my life thinking I conjured that image up in my mind. Or rather, would have. I can't unsee what I saw. Around the age of 19, I was disqualified from the military due to a medical disqualification. I wasn't too sure what to do with my life since this was a lifelong dream and I felt very lost. I did a lot of soul-searching during this time, studied many religions and philosophies. At some point I got into occultism, law of attraction, meditation, and finally, astral projection. To keep it short, I started meditating to attract into my life the things that I wanted. But I also started to practice astral projection. After a few weeks, my aunt started to come into my room scared, began to question what I was doing. I told her I was meditating quite frequently, sometimes up to three hours a day. Why was she asking? Well, she told me that something very weird had just happened in the house. In fact, for a few days in a row, several weird things had been happening. She told me while they were watching TV, the front of the house unlocked itself. The door had just been slammed open. They told me things had been falling off counters and my uncle was seeing things from the corners of his eyes. She didn't ask me to stop, she actually seemed intrigued. My aunt is into crystals and all kind of groovy do stuff. I kept this going. I wasn't able to astral project yet, but I was able to get parts of my body to leave. As weird as that sounds. I was able to remove my arm from my arm. It's a very odd feeling to describe. It feels like your arms are paralyzed. Yet another one you can fully manipulate and feel is coming out of it. I was also able to do this with my right leg. For those who are not understanding what astral projection is, it means leaving your body. I'm not sure if your soul leaves your body or if you project it mentally. All I know is it's very real. I'm not here to persuade you one way or the other, but it's a thing. Supposedly you're able to soul travel by doing this. In any case, a couple of weeks go by and my uncle and aunt need to be gone for a couple of days. I have the house to myself. So what do I do? I have a girl over like any other normal dude would. Nope, I meditate and try to leave my body. By this point, I'm kind of obsessed. For the first time, I fall asleep while meditating. And what proceeds to happen is one of the most traumatic and terrifying things to ever have happened to me. Who am I kidding? It's by far the most terrifying experience of my life. And it haunts me to this day. This is part of the story I don't like telling anyone. 
because they dismiss it as a nightmare. It's just sleep paralysis, bro. I don't care what you decide to call it when I'm about to tell you. If you want to label it as fake, it was more real to life than life is to me. I've asked for projected a few times. I never saw anything very interesting other than my own home. Freaking out my dogs and also what I do is fly over lakes and factories at night. The city. I can never do it for very long. I haven't mastered it and nowadays I avoid the practice altogether. Although it happens involuntarily still from time to time. What I experienced in this instance was different. It felt more physical. It felt more real. And I was attacked by God knows what. I wake up laying flat on my bed, facing up, arms wide open and legs spread apart. The TV's on, the show Ink Master is running. It's night, but the room has sort of a natural light to it, almost like a full moon. I see a shadow in the corner of the room, I try to get up, but I can't move. I'm paralyzed. I start being able to move, but I feel heavy, like trying to swim underwater. The shadow gets closer to me, then crawls on top of my body. And this is embarrassing to say, and I normally leave this part out of the story, but this thing proceeds to put its hand between my legs and press and squeeze, you know. I feel immense physical pain. There's actually something gripping my body and really hurting me. I try to scream, but I can't. I start saying the power of Christ compels you over and over. It does nothing. My back starts to bend in an arc. I'm slightly levitating over my bed. Everything's happening very silently, which allows me to hear loud footsteps coming from the kitchen. While this is all happening, a man walks from the kitchen into my room. I can barely see or look, but he's a middle-aged man wearing a suit. Looks very old-fashioned. After several attempts of asking, my words finally come out. Who are you? The man standing in the corner of the room states, My name is Lucifer. And then ask, Lucifer? He states again, No, Lucifer. The painful back arching and floating continues for a while. That's when suddenly it stops. I fall on my bed and it suddenly is daylight. Ink Master is still on and I can hear birds chirping. Never woke up like this. Like waking up from a dream and simply stopped and I was still awake. I spent the entire day looking things up online, trying to make sense of what happened. When it came night again, the same thing happened again. This entity, or whatever it is, grips me the same way and it hurts. You gotta understand, this pain is very physical and excruciating. I can feel its hands and fingers, and this time, I'm very pissed off. For one reason or another, this time I'm not afraid. I start trying to strangle it. I start just asking it to get out of my body so I can murder it. And suddenly it all stops, just like that. After the second episode, it never happened again. From time to time, I'm still attacked by an entity that looks like me. I'm forced to fight it. But these are more like vivid nightmares. Nothing like the situation I just described. I quit meditating, I quit trying to astral project, and the situation never happened again. I still involuntarily astral project in my sleep sometimes. But it's very uneventful. I don't see other entities or have bad or good things happen. I just float over a lake near my house and enjoy the view for the most part. That was a doozy. My parents just told me I would talk to ghosts. A bit of a weird story I just learned about last week. Twenty-six years old and asked my parents why I'm the only one out of my siblings that know Urdu. It's a Pakistani language. We all know our parents didn't teach us, and they barely speak Urdu around the house, but only when they're talking to family overseas. But even that didn't happen with regularity, at least enough that I would have picked it up. My mom said my great-grandpa taught me. I said I don't remember him. She said he died slightly before she was born. Apparently, when I was around two years old, I had an imaginary friend named the same thing as my great-grandfather from my mother's side. It was a fairly unique name in growing up in America. Well, I'm sure I never heard that name anywhere else before. 
My mom said I would talk to him in English and he would speak back to me in Urdu until I learned. And I was near fluent by the time I was three. I don't remember any of this. And after I found this out, I had a dream last night where I got to meet my great-grandfather. He explained to me that he taught me Urdu because he was tired of watching all his family lose their culture. I tried speaking back to him and was speaking in Urdu in the dream, which has never happened before to me, and promised him I would try to learn more about my culture and asked if he wanted me to tell his family anything from him. He mentioned my youngest uncle by name, asked me to tell him not to ride his motorcycle too fast, since that's how his dad died. Woke up a few hours ago, asked my mom how her dad died. She said it was a motorcycle accident. He was driving too fast and slithered me the garbage truck. I immediately called my uncle in Pakistan, told him not to drive recklessly, and that his grandpa came to me in a dream and explained that to me. I don't know what's going on, how or why this is happening to me, but it's so weird and intriguing. I'm so confused and simultaneously amazed. I want to be able to learn more from him and talk to him again. I don't even know how I would go about it. See ya.